Resetting our development path also means we will be going dark for a long time, likely several years. <sighs> so, yeah. The Riot MMO has been reset, and I'm devastated. I started this channel in January of this year with the express purpose of making videos about the Riot MMO, doing all kinds of predictions and discussions, and the entire premise for my channel has been basically decimated. <laughs> Riot's, Riot's killing my dreams, man. <laughs> no, but seriously, yesterday I had a discussion on my stream about the direction that Riot might be trying to take this MMO, and so here is that discussion. Let's just let's just go over this. Let's just go over this. I feel like there's so much to just to just unpack here. Hey all, I know we know many of you are hungry for news about Riot about the Riot Games MMO project, and we really appreciate your patience and the incredible support you've shown us so far. I'm writing to update you today on where we're at, and before anyone panics, yes, we're still working on the game. First of all, I called it. I knew it. I did. I told everybody. I I saw like like all the firings happened and everybody went nuclear. And I was like, guys, relax. The game is still in development. I promise you, the game is still in development. After a lot of reflection and discussion, we've decided to reset the direction of the project some years ago. This decision wasn't easy, but it was necessary. The initial vision just wasn't different enough from what you can play today. We don't believe you all want an MMO that you've played before with a Runeterra coat of paint to truly do justice to the potential of Runeterra and to meet the incredibly high expectations of players around the world. We need to do something that truly feels like a significant evolution of the genre. This is a huge challenge, but one our team of deeply passionate MMO players and game development veterans is incredibly motivated to pursue. With this new direction, I'm excited to announce uh Fabu Fabrisu as the new executive producer of the MMO Fa Fabrice's experience as a player and pa uh, and passion for creating immersive immersive worlds is extraordinary having led big projects at Riot BioWare and EA he brings a fresh perspective and a shared commitment to excellence that will guide our team as they continue this difficult journey uh this, okay th this right here this section right here is important actually we started laying the groundwork for this pivot some time ago and over the last year so so okay so here we actually get like a specific timeline on uh how long how long they've been uh working on this pivot so they announced the mmo back in 2020 yeah i think so theoretically had they not been like hey by the way we're gonna completely pivot off of what we've done and just do something completely different it, they would the game would have been under development for over three years now i think yeah over three years now so um we have we have a specific timeline so we've they've been laying the groundwork for this pivot for some time ago and over the last year under vijay uh, thakar's management we built key components to the technical foundation to create the kind of ambitious game we're talking about we're grateful for jay's for vijay's leadership and vijay i think i'm saying that right and that he'll be part of the game leadership team going forward as our as our technical director. Resetting our development path also means we'll be going dark for a long time, likely several years. This silence will help provide space for the team to focus on the incredible amount of work ahead of them. We understand the excitement and anticipation that surrounds uh, new information, but we ask for your trust during this silent phase. Remember, no news is good news, as it means we're hard at work pouring our hearts and souls into making something that we hope you'll love. So the first thing, th there's a couple of things that we need to like, I, I think we kind of need to unpack in this. And I I've prepared a, uh, a notepad scene. But we've prepared a notepad. They're going to pivot from a traditional MMO to something that is revolutionary in the space. What we, what that means, no clue. So the game was, uh, the game was announced back in 2020, which means we have three plus years of dev time. They were like, okay, mm, I don't actually really like the the direction that this game is going. Let's let, let let's do something completely revolutionary in the space. Three years of development on an MMO is like roughly half of the average MMO development time of, I want to say it's six years. If that's the case, then let's assume that the 
most of what they did was building out the world and they and they just started into like fleshing out the game itself hopefully this pivot doesn't necessarily mean that hey by the way we're literally scrapping the whole project and we're just gonna go do something entirely new like hopefully that's not what that means so this pivot started at least one year ago that's fine let's let's make a prediction here i'm going to say that so, so he said we're likely going to be going dark for a long time likely several years i think we're going to see a release of 2030 with uh probably a if i had to guess i would say probably a closed alpha and internal testing maybe the end of 2028 now i want to start making some some wild predictions such as what exactly was the reason that they felt as though they needed to pivot we don't believe you all want an mmo that you that you've played before with a rune terra coat of paint so th the funny thing to me was who asked for riot to like revolutionize the mmo space i don't feel like anyone did i've seen so many videos where uh, of 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 mmo players of league players uh, of uh, league casters even that are that were super invested in the mmo and, and excited for its release and they just all all basically said the same thing why do they feel like they essentially need to reinvent the wheel I think I think the first difference, I think the first major difference is raids are just gone. And they're going to be replaced by some other uh small group and large group queued instance system or whatever. So the main reason that I think raids are are gone is because raids cater to like a very a very niche audience. Like lo lots of players in MMOs play the MMO specifically for raids, but raids in particular take up a ridiculous amount of development time. And I don't know if the numbers support the development time to the like interaction time that the players have with it. So I, I think I, I, for that reason, I, I think raids uh, in the modern sense, how we know them, I think raids are gone. I think the other thing that they're going to do is, is they're going to add some kind of advanced uh, Q slash match making system. Let's do let's do a thought exercise. Imagine that you played League, but the only way to get into a ranked game was by getting other people to like add you to to their team. If I was a gold player, I am only inviting platinum or emerald players to my team. So I feel as though it, some kind of queue or matchmaking needs to be in the game in, in order to respect players' time. I think, I think the, the first big one that they need to make is actually le, uh, le, less buttons. The players that are going to play this game are currently growing up in the TikTok era. And they th th these kids already can't play a game that has more than like two or three buttons. And I understand that MMOs are complicated and they need to be more diverse than that. If this game's not coming out till 2030, like I'm predicting, then this game cannot have lots of keybinds or the people who are going to play this game are going to play it for like five years and then they're all going to die of old age. The problem that WoW specifically is having and that other MMOs are having is that its player base is aging they're deep into their careers now at this point or they are having they're starting to have kids they're starting to like start a family get married have responsibilities outside of like keeping themselves alive and so because that player base is aging they're naturally just starting to stop play the game because they just don't have the time anymore so less buttons for the TikTok kids. Uh, so, okay, let's think about this. Legitimately, how many keybinds are in League? Call this core, util, uh, and and uh, what do we call it? We'll go with this movement or um, yeah, we'll, we'll call this movement. 
I understand that not all summoner spells are movement. Translating that to an MMO space means, okay, we're going to have one to two movement spells, four, maybe five spells part of be part of our core rotation, and then anywhere from a three to four utility buttons. Personally, I think that sounds great. I feel like that would uh, piss off elitists and hardcore gamers because it would make the game easier. Yeah, at this point, people who argue for more keybinds or for keybinds to stay high in MMOs, I just don't know. I don't know if we can stay friends. <laughs> that just like that cook just seems crazy to me. Blizzard makes it so hard for me to market their game to my friends. I tell my friends, hey, come play WoW with me. And they just say, okay, yeah, uh, how much is it? And I, oh, well, you know, uh, new expansion is uh, $60. And, then, and they say, okay, okay. Um, and that's it, right? N no, uh, there's a $15 a month fee to, to play the game as well. And so they said, oh, I'm buying the game and then also paying a monthly subscription to, to play the game? Correct. And now with the, the War Within, every year and a half, you have to buy the $60 DLC over again. And then assuming I can convince my friends to get past all of that, they then say, like, they then play the game. They've, in, they've invested at a minimum, at an absolute minimum, like $75, $80 into the game before they've even played a single minute of it. And then... They get to, I don't know, level 30, and they just say, dude, I have, I have, I have nine, 10, 11 buttons already. There's 13 more that I still need to unlock. This is too much. This is too much. And the investment is too high. I think, I think MMOs going into the future need to learn that they have to respect my time. I, I understand that MMOs fundamentally are typically games that have a lot of grinding in them and that 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 grind represents something something prestigious for the players. Something else that's that is a, a significant evolution of the genre is th that the game needs to be free to play. I know everybody's kind of anticipating this from from Riot just because all of their games historically, all of their games that are part of the Riot client historically have been free to play. But I genuinely feel as though a significant evolution to the genre is making the game free to play, which means there is going to be micro microtransactions and that they, they have to rely on like whales and people to buy cool uh, cosmetic armor sets or something to support the game. And so something I think that they are probably going to do is they are going to do seasonal uh, passes. I know, like I can, I can already hear the comment section on YouTube like losing their mind over me saying that they're probably going to do battle passes. But you gotta admit, man, like as long as the rewards are good, it's too good of a model for them to pass up on if they're going to try to make the game free to play. I, I want um, to have. PVE instanced combat feel seamless with the world. You know, I, I walk into a specific zone and I don't know, a scuttle crab pops out of the water and I don't know, maybe a guard is there saying, hey, let's wait for more reinforcements before we try to take this down. And that's you, quote unquote, entering the queue. I feel as though that would be really immersive and really fun. A guard is just saying, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's wait for more people to get here before before we, you know, attempt this. Should it have add-ons like weak auras? No, absolutely not. After raid leading a mythic raid team for a few tiers, half of the prep being making sure that my raid team has the correct weak auras and understands how to use them is just ridiculous to me. I would so much rather just go in and try to natty do it every time it sucks the fun out of doing hard mythic rating when the game is just like these these add-ons and, and and the weak ours are telling me what to do and how to do it if riot was smart 
they would just approach the people that made LVY for WoW and just say, hey, all of you come over here, work for us, and you guys are going to be our, our, our UI design team and make this the most customizable user interface possible. After all these thoughts, I kind of just rambled on for a while. So that's going to be the end of the video and the end of the discussion. But please go let me know what predictions you would like to make about the Riot MMO. What features is it going to have that's going to make it a significant evolution of the genre? Also, I forgot to mention that this is probably the last video that I will make about the Riot MMO specifically for a really long time. Again, I'm kind of disappointed that I made a YouTube channel with like the premise that I would talk about the Riot MMO until it came out. And then they turned around and were like, actually, yeah, it's going to take us like six or seven or eight more years to make the game. So stick around for the evolution of my content. And I'll see you guys for next week's video. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more high effort. This is my first time I ever try to turn a stream into a video. So let me know how I did. But we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.